not having me for a mug, I'll tell you that. I said, they're not having me for a mug, I'll tell you that. They're not that. <laughs> but he knew what was going on behind his back. He'd turn in his grave. He was that, Ron. Telling me there was no money. No money. No money. Chip shop back, they had two pans, ding dong, frying every night. <laughs> Three serving and two battering and no money. I said, you can dye that fur coat sky blue pink. We still know who it belonged to. <laughs> I said, I'm not having her coming round here, lardy dying it, Ron. I said, I'm not having that, I'm not having that. I've not forgotten her yet. Ordering lilies a fortnight before. <laughs> that yet and then giving him a spoonful of mustard when the doctor said don't let him sweat <laughs> who's had more of it than i have i say who's had more of it than me he says as he said anything about that signet ring he couldn't get off his finger i said no he said no he won't he's wearing it <laughs> i thought right monkey <laughs> early to bed early to rise and it's vital that we should all get a good night's sleep. Deep and undisturbed slumber is essential, and what a blessing to be able to lie snug and warm between the sheets. But as daylight comes in through the window and you roll over and decide to end another five minutes, what do you get? If you're waiting for me to light that fire, you'll be there till dinner time. <laughs> wife from the bedclothes. Um, why, uh, what time is it, love? You'd lie there all morning if I didn't make a move. <laughs> and it's time you realise there's other people trying to get some sleep beside you. I don't think I've closed my eyes once all night again. What with that alarm clock tick, 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 tick in my ear all night? That bathroom window banging away and you flat on your back snoring your head off? <laughs> No wonder the window cleaner mistook me for your mother. <laughs> well, it's a new man, Arm. I keep saying we'll have twin beds. <laughs> I'll bet I was out of that bed a dozen times picking those Adidas downs up off the floor. <laughs> and I'd no sooner got back in bed than you dragged them all out at the bottom. I don't know who you thought you were playing for. But I only said you're in my half again. <laughs> and you shouted penalty and kicked me straight in the face. <laughs> There's something wrong with you. You're always talking in your sleep. And I don't know who this Geraldine is. <laughs> she wasn't half leading your dance at quarter past four this morning. <laughs> Oh, it's just a book I'm reading. I don't know what's come over you lately. I don't. You see, you scared me to death the other night when I thought you were sleepwalking. I watched you going out of the room with your arms stretched out in front of you. It was only when you came back and said that's better I realised you'd been for a drink of water. <laughs> I can't understand you. You come home cracking your fagged out and you won't eat your tea, you kick your shoes off and it's, oh, I must have an early night tonight. Get slumped down in front of the fire, out to the wide with your head all lolling all over the place. And then at quarter past eleven, when I ask you if you're coming to bed, you wanted to play me at ping pong. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a different arrangement here. Now that's enough. I don't see why. Have you finished? Well, if I'm going to... Oh, oh, shut up. Well, if I'm going... Have you done? <laughs> no wonder I've got ring drama. Oh, go to bed. <laughs> Don't they make a fuss? Mind you, we do take a bit of pudding up with. I mean, you just lose one night's sleep yourself and it becomes a different kettle of fish altogether. And as you travel on that morning bus with the day's work in front of you, you'll find you can't keep your eyes open. But have you noticed there's always some cheerful bus conductor who's eager to put you right? Y'all deeds, please. <laughs> hey, hey, sleeping beauty. 
Did you want to book return or was it bed and breakfast? <laughs> Sorry, I was. Are we nearly there? Nearly there. We're halfway back. <laughs> I thought you'd snuffed it. <laughs> well, it beats me how you've slept through it. The way he's been jamming his brakes on, it's a wonder to me you've not finished up in the cab. <laughs> well, I can't get any sleep at all these nights lately. You should have been with us on Saturday. We saw United play. We didn't wake up till Tuesday. <laughs> Do you, uh, do you feel this, this lacking in energy? Uh, well, yes, I can't understand it. I always have a cup of that vitamin before I go to bed. Well, that's it, then. <laughs> You've been reading those adverts about deep sleep coming in three layers. <laughs> as far as I can see, when the wife whips the clothes off, you've only two. <laughs> well, I thought it was supposed to bring on restful slumber. You'd have thought so if you'd seen what it did to our cat. <laughs> One sip of it and it flew straight up the wall. <laughs> well, what about those lack of sleep stories they keep advertising in the paper? You mean where he's too tired to clock on and finishes up the managing director? Oh, yes. <laughs> Where they keep drawing that doctor leaning back trying to explain it by medical science makes me laugh. <laughs> if you think your doctors are gonna start telling you about energy reserves being built up while you sleep, you have another thing coming. I went to see mine, took one look at my tongue and said, try going to bed. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know what to do now. I'll tell you what would put you right. Uh, oh, what's that? Before you go to bed tonight, have a hot bath and cover yourself with itching powder. Well, will, will that make me go to sleep? No, but it'll keep you busy while you're awake. <laughs> I don't know whether you know it, but it can be said that a dog is a man's best friend. But this is all very well until you call round to see a friend who's got a dog. <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> Come in, it's all right. I've got him by the collar. <laughs> no, no, let me shut the door. If you touch that door, he'll go for you. <laughs> Woo! Come here! Come here! <laughs> See? Squeeze past at the back while I've got him. <laughs> Only I don't let him go. He's not at his dinner. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> now then, now then. Now then, now then! Woo! Now then! <laughs> Woo! Now then! <laughs> now then, Mr. Uh, he's taking a dislike to you. He does sometimes. <laughs> He'll be all right if you just sit there and say nothing. <laughs> Only don't move till he lies down. Hey, come here! <laughs> he wants to put his face near yours. <laughs> I shouldn't let him kiss you. <laughs> You'll be all right if you don't move. He'll come down when he's ready. Hello, he's got your hat. <laughs> It'll be all right, he'll spit it out. <laughs> And, you, you, and you know, he knows every word I say. He knows every word I say. Hello, he's gone on the, the city with it. Hey, hey, hey! Woo! Woo! <laughs> and you know, he's like a big soft kid at home. <laughs> but you say the wrong word and he'll have you. <laughs> and what with the way he snaps at my feet when I try to put my slippers on and... He'd fight, he'd fight me, he'd fight me all the way upstairs. Then he tried to get in bed with me. <laughs> well, as I say, that's the third night this week I've had to sleep in his kennel. <laughs> uh, 
thank you very much. But don't go away because here and now we are taking the lid off the post office. And as I say, what with having to come to this post office on Mondays for the children's allowance, then popping down on Wednesdays for his postal order, and again on Fridays to collect his pension. Then we have to come to post his pools on a Thursday. She won't lift a finger, you know. Well, as I say, it's got to such a pitch in the end, we thought it over and decided the only thing to do was to come and live next door. <laughs> Yes, but uh, looking round this post office now, you, you wouldn't think that uh, over 100,000 postmen, postmen no. in, in this country were delivering 50 million letters every Are day. They really? Yes, mm. they certainly mm. get some... They certainly do get shoe through Shoe leather, some... yes. <laughs> well, I will say that our postman used to walk 23 miles before he got to our house, and, you know, never once in 14 years did he shut the gate. <laughs> You know, when you think, last year, the post office had a turnover of 95 million pounds. Mm. I mean, just imagine they could make two million pounds in a week. Weak moment, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I put five bob in the post office savings bank in 1933, and I've never regretted it. <laughs> Even when I lost the book. <laughs> like I say, I can't even get it out. What chance has anybody else? <laughs> but uh, it, it is marvellous, you know. I mean, mm. when you think about... <laughs> when, you, when you pick the phone up, I mean, yeah, and ask for a number. number yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's... <laughs> it's wonderful to think that the post office dialed 50 million numbers every day. Day, yes. Mind you, I will say that for them. They do usually get the right one in the end. <laughs> well, I, I just, I can't get over it. I mean, there's 24,000 post offices in this country alone. Mm. You can send a letter from here to New York inside a day and a half. Yes, wonderful. And to think we've been queuing up here 45 minutes and all we want is a Tuckney stamp. <laughs> Course, the key men in any post office are the men behind the counter. They have to deal a dozen different matters all at the same time. To keep the queue on the move, they must make lightning decisions as each new face appears at the other side of the section window. <laughs> right, next please, withdrawals. Other side, madam. Next, yes. Telegram, do not sign your name on the back. That's not my fault, sir. There were nibs in them all this morning. <laughs> Next, please. No, sir, we don't recruit policemen here at all. <laughs> Next, please. One registered, four and a penny. Take that dog off those scales, madam. <laughs> they don't need to be weighed to be licensed. <laughs> Send him where, madam? Raylex, 14 and 5. Have you got a cloth, madam? Next, please. <laughs> No, sir. I've told you I can't register a parcel without string and sealing wax. Next, please. <laughs> What's that, sir? You want a license for Gilbert Arden? Certainly. Certainly. Where are you keeping him? <laughs> Next. 43 Tuppence 8, miss. No, Sonny, you'll have to lick all those yourself. <laughs> Next, please. Parcel for... Oh, thank you very much. I've been waiting for that. Tommy, come and take over. He just brought me fish and chips. <laughs> An important feature of the post office service is the sending of telegrams. You can walk into any telephone box and dictate a telegram to any part of the country. What could be more simple? Hello? Hello? I is that the telegrams? Will you, will you tell me, Mother, I'll meet her at the station? <laughs> No, she's, she's coming this afternoon on the train. Yes, yes, yes. Well, she sent a prepaid reply, so I haven't put anything in. 
Where does she walk? Well, you know that house on the corner of Brookfield Street? <laughs> it's near a, ga near a garage. No, it's near a garage, not a cabbage. A garage. <laughs> well, she's moved from there. <laughs> you are. Just a minute. Will you put get earliest train stop? Stop on till last stop. Stop. <laughs> Glad to have you stop with us. Stop. Mind you don't get lost. Stop. Just a minute. He says we don't need to keep saying stop. He hasn't even started yet. <laughs> Hello? Will you read it back? Just a minute. He says he thinks it'll sound better backwards. <laughs> Can we take something out? Hello? Oh, yes, you're right. You're right. She knows she's coming by train, so we don't need to say that. Yes. Oh, you're right. She'll have to get off at the last stop. It doesn't go any further. <laughs> yes, that's right. Oh, well, what does that leave us with? Just a minute. He says, all we've got left is get lost, and that goes for him, too. <laughs> Of course, the nerve centre of every general post office is the department where all letters and parcels are sorted in readiness for delivery. It is vital that the work is completed with speed and accuracy, and this depends upon the harmony and teamwork of the men behind the scenes. Let's just take a peep into the busy sorting section. I'll, I'll go for that big ginger-headed postman yet, Jimmy. <laughs> I'll have his life yet, so help me. Not telling me he's got 14 bags full out of three letter boxes. <laughs> I know his tricks. What he hasn't delivered by nine o'clock, he posts. <laughs> well, I'll swear he takes them home and brings them back and bring them back when I'm on nights. <laughs> I'll have his life, Jimmy, so help me. One here I've sorted three times, to my knowledge. <laughs> Keeps writing not no near on it. <laughs> I wouldn't care, but it's addressed to Somerset House. <laughs> and keep that bottom door shut. Whizzing in and out of here with them red bands, like a circus. <laughs> Just back to one up here now, three tonner. Bringing the six o'clock collection. I get the back down, there's one little parcel. <laughs> I'm just stamping it, and he has the cheek to shout, put that parcel down, it's my laundry. <laughs> I'll go for him yet, Jimmy. I'll have his life. So help me. I've never been off my feet since eight o'clock this morning. He gets me arguing with Big Taffy, and when I look round, he's dumped another 27 bags behind me. <laughs> what chance have you? Oh, and that reminds me. Just keep an eye on things for a minute. I want to nip out and post a letter. 